All right, guys, it's your buddy Rome. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I do material tests, especially for using these metal business cards that you guys have seen me use in a lot of my streams that I'm uh, creating to um, using to create uh, portraits. So to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, as you guys can see, I was able to add a, quite a few photos onto these basic metal business cards. Now, one of the things you probably wanna do first is a material test, even though you can find the settings for the most part right on uh, LaserPecker site to get you started, kinda in the ballpark. The rest is gonna be a little bit trial and error. Now, there's two type of material tests that you can run if you're gonna be doing something, say for instance, like one of these portraits. One is, I'll show you guys here using um, the Laser Packer Studio Suite. And what we're gonna do here is, uh, see if I can do this as fast as possible. So let's open our Laser Packer Suite. And let me show you guys what we're gonna be working with. All right, so what we're gonna do here, guys, is just open uh, a simple file. So we're just gonna go here. Now, my um, slide extension is connected to my laser right now. So just so you guys can see how I I'm kind of running this. So I do have the slide extension connected. Again, you can run this in whatever configuration you want. If you have it in the standard configuration where it's directly over the, uh, the work bed, it's gonna work fine for that as well. All right, so let's get right to it. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna connect the laser. And you guys probably heard that little chirp. So as you see, when I first connect it, you're seeing the um, the configuration if this was not set up with the offset or if I was using the slide extension. So from my perspective, I also have to go in here and turn on my slide extension. Now I usually set it up for multi-files, so I'll just click one time and then we're pretty much good to go. Now, let's say you want to do a business card and you're interested in um, you know, trying to figure out what's gonna be the best power setting for that business card. What I recommend starting out is just to bring in a file that you want to use. So let's just say I'm going to use, uh, let me just find something here, one of my model files. Let's say I use this file right here and I bring this in. Of course, the first thing you're gonna have to do is convert that to your dither so you have an idea of what you're gonna be working with. Now, this is not really gonna have that much of an effect on anything, but I just want you guys to see, you know, pretty much how this works, right? So then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go up here to where you see um, your current, this little button right here, and this is gonna give you the option of creating different arrays. The ones you're looking for right here is your material test. So click on that, and then what this is gonna give you is some options, and you can name this, we'll just call it photo one. And you can name this and then base this on uh, power settings, okay? So anywhere from 100% power to a minimum of 10% power, and as far as on the depth, you can go as high as 100% depth and as low as 10%. Now. When working with metal business cards, obviously you're not trying to cut through anything, so you do not need 100% depth. The maximum depth you're probably going to be working with is going to be about 20%, maybe 25%. So let's just put it at the top end, 25%, which is gonna be a little bit odd. And then on our power settings, we don't need this to go all the way down to 10%. So let's say our minimum power on this would be, I don't know, let's say, 60% power would be the minimum power, okay? Now that's gonna give us uh, the amount of swatches that we wanna work with. In most cases, guys, you're not gonna need that many, but I'll just you know do it this way so you guys can see how this works. Now this is gonna be very similar if you're using this in uh, the app on your phone or tablet. Now what you wanna do is resize this. So on the Mac, it's, you know, it's control, I mean, sorry, it's command. And then you'll be able to, oops, my bad, let's go back. On the Mac, it's going to actually be your um, shift. And then you should be able to draw this in and resize this based on whatever it is that you're trying to do, okay? So my goal here would be to use this for something like a business card. So we can just push this off to the side for now. We can come back and resize this as needed. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a tool path. 
So the toolpath needs to be the exact same size as the business card that you're going to be using. So that's gonna be kind of like a rectangular shape, something like that. Now, if you have a caliber, you can measure it, but most of the time your business cards are gonna have a standard size. And I think that's 54, let me just measure it real quick. So your width is going to be right at 54 millimeters and the height of the card is gonna be about 86, 87 millimeters. So let's just say 86. So you can come up here and unlock this little tab right here. And so we're gonna go 54 and then on the, um, and 86, I think I said. Okay, so there we go. That's the size of our business card. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take this um, test and we wanna to try to match it up on the business card so we know that it's gonna fit within the business card, okay? You don't have to stretch it out if you don't want to. You just want it to be able to read and see all of the different images on here. So I'm just gonna resize this just a touch and then I'm gonna place it pretty much inside of the business card. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a better look at exactly what we're getting. We just wanna make sure that all of our numbers and everything are gonna fit on this one business card, okay? Now, what I usually do next is I will turn off um, the photo and then I will frame using just this business card. So you're gonna select the business card or the, the uh, toolpath, hit preview, okay? And then when you switch back over to your laser, you'll see that the laser is kind of giving you an idea of where it's going to engrave. Now I've already focused this laser, so I'm pretty much good to go. So I'm just gonna take a standard business card, one of these little metal business cards, and I'm gonna place it inside of uh, that tool path, okay? So now we're ready to rock and roll. All right, so we go back over to our desktop. And at this point, you can stop your preview and you can turn your image back on and turn your, your uh, tool path off because you no longer need the tool path. You're just gonna run this as you see it right here, okay? So then the next thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and hit preview just to see where this is now falling on the card. So if we go back over to uh, our uh, laser cam, I just wanna move this over just a touch just to make sure that it's gonna fit on the card and I'm pretty much ready to go. Okay guys, I did go back because I forgot to tell you guys about the invert that should have some effect on your images, but that's one of the things that you definitely want to do is to invert your image, especially if you're gonna be engraving on something that's dark like one of these metal business cards. So again, we're just gonna go back up here and we're gonna choose our um, material test Let's set this to, again, photo. We'll just call it photo two. All right, so power-wise, 100% minimum is going to be, uh, let's just say 70%. And then on the depth, this would be somewhere around, maximum would be 25%, I think. And then the minimum would be, you know, I would bring this down as little as 3%. You know, that's a possibility. So we got five rows, five columns. I don't think we need that much. So we're going to reduce that as well. So we're going to bring that down to three and three, just to kind of give you guys an idea of how this is supposed to fall. So you have three columns, three rows, and we're going to try and match this up with our business card. All right, so here is our image. Let's zoom out. All right, so here is our image that we're gonna try to match up with that business card. So we're gonna just grab our shift and we're gonna shrink this down so that it fits onto our business card. And let's bring it up here again. This is gonna be, you know, this will become repetition after a while, but you guys will get it. It's not that hard. And then we're just gonna match this up so it fits onto our business card because that's what we're kind of looking for is how well these images are gonna show up on our business cards. Now, within this uh, material test, we have the numbers that I have already used. So somewhere between 70% power and 14% depth is where you're gonna probably get the best image for this. But again, like I said, it depends on your setup. Now. You have a couple of options here. You can run this on your um, 10 
uh, 64 nanometer laser or you can run it on your 410 laser because this same um, thing has been done with the older laser packers. So let's just go ahead and run it with the uh, 410 nanometer laser just so you guys can get an idea. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit preview just to make sure that it's falling on our business card where we want it to be. All right, so we're gonna turn off now our tool path. So that's gonna be this right here. And now all we're gonna do is focus on this. And if you wanna check again, you can just hit your preview and that's gonna let you know exactly where this is gonna fall uh, on your business card so that you won't worry about you know missing out. I see I can move that over just a touch. So I'm gonna adjust that just a little bit. All right, so there we go. All right, so now I should be able to just go next, continue. And what you're going to see is it's going to transfer each one of these photos over to the laser, and then it's going to engrave them, including all of the text. Now, like I said, you can do this also using the uh, smartphone app. You can use the tablet app, whichever the case is going to be. It's going to be similar for Mac or PC or iOS or Android. But today we're doing this on a MacBook Air. This is going to work the same on your PC or a MacBook Pro, whatever the case it will be. Now, if you're watching this video, there has been a firmware update to the Laser Packer 4, which makes it run or allows it to run much faster. So we're going to see how well that's going to affect uh, what we're doing here with this business card. So you guys can see it's kind of moving around a little bit, getting started, getting its positions to start engraving onto this metal business card. So let's get right to it. All right, so it's gonna engrave each one of these little photos just to give you guys an idea of what each one of these is supposed to look like. This is going to give you your power settings. The power settings are the most important thing for your material test that is, to ensure you're going to get the best result when you're working with different materials. In this case, it's a metal business card. This could be a mirror. It could be a piece of wood. It could be a piece of paper, whatever the case may be. Yes, I highly, highly recommend that you guys do a material test because it's going to save you a lot of material. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for a second. We're going to come back once this is done and see exactly what we have. All right, guys, so it's done. But before I reveal this, I want to show you guys something really quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to run this a second time. But this time we're actually going to run this using our um, 1064 nanometer laser. So we're going to choose that one as our second run and we're going to replace the business card. So we're going to just take our business card off, push that off to the side. Grab another business card. I think that's about right there. We'll go hit our preview just to see where it's falling. So let's go ahead and hit the preview. Okay. So now we're going to run it a second time using our fiber or UV laser and see exactly what we get. We're gonna run the same process. Again, it's gonna transfer all of the files over to the laser. It's just gonna use a different frequency when it engraves these. So we'll see what this looks like um, in comparison to using it with the um, 410. All right, just a few more and it's gonna start. All right, guys, here we go. Now, I must say this um, speed increase um, is substantial, guys. It is substantial from, you know, 2,000 to 4,000. 
you definitely see a difference in the performance of this laser. Now, does everything have to be run at the fastest possible speed? I don't know if that's really that important. I mean, unless you're doing a lot of batch jobs, but um, if you're doing things like business cards and you're really trying to rock these out pretty quick, yes, the new speed update does have a lot to do with it. The other thing that I've noticed using this laser is that, or most of these lasers, if you're using your um, 1064, you won't have as much cleanup when it comes to working with things like these metal business cards, where in the other uh, spectrum of using the 410, you will have to use a little bit of alcohol to remove some of the debris that's left over on the cards. And I'll show you guys what I mean once this is complete. And we're getting pretty close, so this should be done here in just a second. We don't have too many more passes. Well, only one pass, but we should be done with this here in just a second. And you guys are seeing this in real time. I didn't speed anything up, nor did I slow, I mean, uh, stop um, for the rendering of this. So you guys are seeing this in real time. All right, so we're almost done. All right, looks like we're done. So if we go back over to our desktop, you guys can see that it is complete. All right, so we're ready to go. All right, so let's grab both cards. So this is our, you guys can see that, this is our uh, fiber laser. So it's giving us an idea of what it's gonna look like using the fiber laser. And then this is our 1064. I mean, this is our uh, 410, I mean 450 nanometer laser. Now let's throw a little alcohol on this just to clean this up to see what it looks like. All right guys, so after cleaning it uh, with just a little rubbing alcohol, you guys can see it opens up these images a lot better from the um, uh, 410 laser. So let's try the same thing with what we created with our uh, 1064. So we're just gonna add just a little bit of alcohol, clean up the metal just a little bit. I'm not gonna go very, you know, I'm not doing a bunch here, but I just want you guys to be able to see um, what you're going to get. I don't know how well this is gonna translate um, using this camera, but here are the two cards together, just to give you an idea. So obviously you can use either of the lasers and you're gonna get similar results. One just right required, just a little bit more cleanup than the other. But at the end of the day, uh, the devices are very, very capable of creating some amazing content. So definitely check it out. You will be able to do these metal business cards with no problem. All right, so I'm gonna edit this video down a little bit and hopefully it won't be too ridiculously long. And um, you know, hopefully this video has been helpful to somebody out there who's just getting started with one of these lasers, has been curious about the material test. It is a great addition to the laser pecker studio uh, design studio that they've added the uh, material test to it but those who are using like myself these other lasers that use light burn we're very used to using material tests and it's great now that this is a built-in feature all right guys it's your buddy rome with rome knows tech i will catch you all in the next video until then stay safe peace i'm out